All right, in this video, I'm gonna give you a complete breakdown of my airdrop farming portfolio. So this right here is my public wallet, CryptoCove.eth. I have probably five or six Ethereum wallets that I'm actively doing stuff on. I'm only gonna share this one. It's not my biggest wallet, but it's certainly not my smallest. And a lot of the stuff that I'm doing here is kind of mirrored in my other wallets as well. A lot of the restaking stuff and a lot of the bridging and other things. So I'm gonna show you this wallet I'm gonna break it down in terms of everything that I'm doing to farm airdrops here. And then I'm also gonna show you my public Solana wallet, CryptoCove.Soul. And I'm gonna show you within the Cosmos ecosystem some stuff that I'm doing as well. Oh, and I can't forget Aptos and also Sui. So this video might be a little bit on the longer side, but this will give you a pretty solid overview of all of the different types of things I'm doing to farm airdrops. So let's get right into it. Now, in case you have no idea what this website I'm showing you right now is, this is called DBank. This is a great website for tracking your own portfolio. So if you connect a wallet to this app, it gives you a great breakdown of where your assets are, not only on Ethereum mainnet, but on all of the other L2s as well. Maybe not every single L2, but it's compatible with a lot of different L2s as you can see here. Now, the reason why I have so many random obscure ones on the list is because I've been farming airdrops from bridges and from layer zero. So that's why I have $0 or $1 balances on a bunch of these random chains that no one really uses. Anyways, this is a great portfolio tracking app for the Ethereum ecosystem. And you can not only connect your wallet and track your own, but you can see what other people are up to as well. So this is Vitalik.eth, his public wallet, and we can track where his assets are in this hot wallet here. And you can do this for anybody. So there's actually a stream tab here where you can find and follow other people that are doing stuff. So you can track whale wallets, you can track your own portfolio, and there's lots of utility. So this is my public wallet right here, CryptoCove.eth. It's not hidden, people could find it if they wanted to. So let's break down exactly what I have in this portfolio here to farm airdrops. So I'll go one by one, starting with the highest TVL chains and then work our way down. So for starters, Mode is the L2 where I currently have the most assets right now. And that is because they have an airdrop campaign ongoing. The first round of the airdrop is supposed to end sometime in the next week or two. And so I've really focused a lot of my activities on mode. Well, actually a lot of my TVL because I haven't actually been super, super active. The mode airdrop campaign really benefits bridging and then keeping value on the network or depositing assets into DeFi applications. So that is why I have such a high balance on the mode L2 right now. So if I click on this L2, we can scroll down and see what I'm up to. I have some EETH from EtherFi. This was previously in Ionic and I'm about to move it into another application. Then I have some Easy ETH from Renzo on Ironclad and I've borrowed some assets against that. And then in Ionic, I currently have uh, Kelp DAO ETH, although in the app here, it shows up as just regular ETH. That is actually Kelp ETH, restaked ETH. So as you can see, a lot of exposure to restaking, liquid restaking tokens, three different ones on the mode L2. And then also I have this meme coin and just some ETH to pay for gas. So that's my play for mode right now. Basically it's incentivizing the amount of assets that you have on that L2. And then if you use those assets in DeFi applications, like I've done here, you get points multipliers for the mode L2. Now, before I move on to the next biggest L2 in this portfolio, I guess I should also briefly talk about the bridges that I'm farming, cross-chain protocols, ways that you can get assets to and from these different networks, because I'm actually interacting with quite a few of them on a regular basis. And some of the biggest ones would be Jumper, would be DBridge, Rango, Layer Zero, and the Stargate Bridge, Orbiter, Owl2, and there's a couple of other ones in there as well. I've previously released a full tutorial on bridges, oh, Hyperlane. So that won't be reflected in this portfolio here, and I'm not gonna get super, super in depth on that, but on a daily or at least weekly basis, I'm moving smaller amounts of assets around, not thousands and thousands of dollars, but I'm moving assets around between these different networks to farm those bridges. Anyways, let's move to the next, which is Mantle. And so currently I have a decent amount of the Puff meme coin token in my wallet, but as of tomorrow, it's moving into phase three of the airdrop campaign. And so I will be staking the full amount of that to continue earning more airdrops of this token. Then I have some MNT, which is just the gas token on Mantle. And then the other big airdrop that I'm farming on the Mantle L2 is Athena. So the ENA token is actually currently live. 
on the Mantle L2. There's two ways that I was farming this. First was by staking MNT tokens to earn ENA. And then the other way is by using the USDE coin and depositing it into Init Capital as well as Pendle in order to earn shards for the Athena Finance airdrop round two. So I deposited about 1400 USDE into Init Capital. And then I put something like 1500 USDE into the Pendle YT pool. And what this does is basically it degrades the value of your capital over time in exchange for crazy multipliers on the points. So I'm burning money in this Pendle YT pool in order to get a huge amount of points for the Athena round two airdrop. So those are the two main airdrops that I'm farming on the Mantle L2. But then I also have this position currently on Lendl where I have a bunch of Mantle ETH. This is liquid staked ETH from Mantle. And I do keep moving some of this around here and there. Some of it I'm using for the Puff airdrop campaign because they want you to stake some Mantle ETH as well. And also by holding Mantle ETH on the Mantle L2, the team has confirmed that there will be a small allocation of the eigenlayer airdrop. They're giving some eigen points for just holding METH and using it in DeFi on the Mantle L2. So those are my big positions on Mantle. I really like this network. The Mantle token itself is already in existence. They've already had one round of their airdrop. They have said that there will be future rounds for the Mantle airdrop, but I wouldn't say that it's going to be quite as lucrative as a token that hasn't even dropped, like Mode, for example. So that's why I have significantly more of my capital on Mode right now than Mantle, although I really do enjoy the Mantle ecosystem and there's other opportunities in it aside from just getting that MNT token itself. Oh yeah, and if I scroll down here, also I have 500 Mantle tokens staked and earning rewards, and then also I provided a small amount of liquidity of the USDE and USDT tokens on Merchant Mode again for the Athena Shards campaign. So that is Mantle. The next biggest bucket of assets in this portfolio is Ethereum mainnet. So what do we have here? Well, I have some ETHFi tokens from round one of the EtherFi airdrop. I did sell some of that airdrop that I got to use the capital to farm more airdrops. And that's part of my airdrop snowball strategy, but I did keep a little chunk of it because I do like what the team over at EtherFi is building and I'm pretty bullish on it for the future, so I decided to keep a smaller amount of that. Then I have some ETH just to pay for gas fees, a couple of non-zero balances that are pretty much worthless, and if we scroll down here, you can see I made a decent sized deposit, not massive, but 0.75 ETH into the Swell L2 using the restaked Swell token. RSW ETH. So by making an early deposit to the Swell L2 before it even goes live, I'm earning a whole bunch of airdrops for doing that. I'm earning the Swell token, eigenpoints, there's gonna be other airdrops from ecosystem partners as well. And then since this is a liquid restaked token, that's also earning eigenlayer points for that. As you can see on many of these different L2s, there is a big focus on the eigenlayer airdrop. And really I have put a lot of assets into that, not just in this public wallet here, but in some of my other wallets as well. So I would say it's definitely a major focus of mine. If eigenlayer rugs, I'm gonna be in a tough position though. <laughs> Anyways, what else do I have on mainnet? I have some ENA tokens staked with Athena. So that is from round one of the Athena airdrop campaign. And if you stake the ENA token or lock it up on their platform, you get points boosts for round two of their airdrop campaign. I have a small amount of ETH on Zora, and then that's it on mainnet. So not too, too much going on on Ethereum mainnet. I've really tried to bridge a lot of my assets to L2s because honestly, I hate paying transaction fees for doing stuff. When you're paying $20 per transaction, it kind of hurts because on L2s like mode, you can literally pay like zero dollars, one penny sometimes. Anyways, let's move on to the next biggest one, which is Arbitrum. So with Arbitrum, they already dropped their token over a year ago. I have a little bit of ETH just to pay for transactions, but I am on Arbitrum with some capital because I'm using the Pendle pools and a lot of the good ones are on the Arbitrum L2. So you can see I've got some assets in the Kelp DAO, which is another liquid restake token. Uh, LP pool. Then I've got some assets in the EtherFi LP pool. And then I was also farming both Kelp and EtherFi as well as Eigenlayer with the YT, which again is that asset that degrades in value over time 
for ridiculous points multipliers. But these both actually matured yesterday or today. So these are both worthless now. However, I did get a ridiculous amount of points for doing that. Actually, I can show you my EtherFi dashboard. Let's go over here. So in EtherFi, I have 6.4 million EtherFi loyalty points, 4,800 eigenlayer points, and only 165,000 of these points came from referrals. So the vast, vast majority of this is coming from those Pendle YTs, as you can see if I hover over it here. So that is the benefit of using those YT pools on Pendle via the Arbitrum L2. You just burn your ETH for a ridiculous amount of points and then hope that the airdrop that we get in round two for EtherFi is going to be a lot more than whatever I burned. Anyways, that's pretty much it for Arbitrum. I have a tiny position on Radiant Capital and I was using Gearbox at one point, but I rotated to other stuff. So I actually rotate around quite a bit depending on where I think the best opportunity is. For example, on Mode, even just a couple of days ago on Ironclad, I had way more leverage on and then the whole de-pegging event occurred and that caused me to rejig everything to pay off some of the loan and to increase the health of my position. So I do a fair bit of moving stuff around depending on the market conditions and what I think is the new best opportunity. Anyways, let's move now to scroll. So on scroll, even just a couple of days ago, I had a leverage position up with Kelp Dow restaked ETH on Layer Bank. But then when the Renzo DPEG happened, I actually pulled those assets over to Mode to shore up my position there. So I no longer have that leverage position on scroll. What I do have is some ETH, and then I'm LPing some ETH and staked ETH on Ambient. So that's currently all that I'm doing on scroll. I'm trying to keep you know a reasonable amount of TVL on that L2, and then when they enable the low gas fee upgrade in a month or so, I think it's supposed to go through, I'll probably increase my activity. And if I have some more capital to throw at this, I'll also bridge some more stuff over and put it into restaking and DeFi apps. I'm, I'm just kind of more bullish on mode right now because the token is dropping imminently versus with scroll, they haven't even actually started their airdrop campaign yet. So I think there's still time for this. And when I get some airdrops from mode, hopefully some big ones, then I'll take some of the capital that I get there, move it over to scroll and then continue rolling that airdrop snowball. Okay, next up, Linea. I have in my wallet a bunch of Foxy, which is the meme coin, some ETH to pay for gas. But then in terms of my airdrop farming assets, I've provided 0.11 ETH on Stargate in LP right now. So there's two reasons for this. First of all is I'm getting the layer zero airdrop by providing liquidity to the Stargate bridge. And then secondly, it's for the Linea Surge. They want more TVL on their L2 and they were providing an early deposit bonus for people that deposited 0.1 ETH or more into a DeFi app on Linea. So that's why I'm providing that liquidity on Stargate. It's a multi airdrop qualifier and I like things that increase my airdrop surface area like that. With one pool of capital, if I can hit multiple airdrops, that is the ideal situation for me. Okay, next up we have base. Now I am highly skeptical that they are going to drop a token, definitely not anytime soon, but potentially never because Coinbase, the company is registered in the US. They're listed publicly on the stock exchange. They have to undergo serious compliance and regulatory requirements and the coin shares govern the Coinbase company. So for them to release a base token to govern the base network, I don't know if that would even work legally. So I'm kind of skeptical about the base L2 airdrop itself. However, there's a lot of other opportunities on base. So the biggest asset that I have is DGEN, which is that meme coin that allows you to tip and receive tips on the Warpcaster application, but you have to have a minimum balance of 10,000 in your wallet in order to participate in that. So that's why I have the 10,000 DGEN tokens in my wallet so that I can use Warpcaster and potentially qualify for a future DGEN airdrop. Aside from that, I have some smallish positions on Uniswap LP from farming the Aperture airdrop campaign. And I've been using the base L2 to make swaps on Aperture as well. And then that's pretty much it. These positions here are just nothing. I think I opened these for doing quests on layer three or something like that. So that's it for base. I do like to use base though a lot for bridging because it's usually pretty cheap and you can go from base to optimism to Arbitrum via the Stargate bridge pretty cheaply. Okay, next up, ZK Sync. So 
With this L2, I've tried to maintain a minimum balance of at least around $100 at all times, and then I'm trying to generate transaction volume and value. I've provided some liquidity on SyncSwap, which is one of the main DEXs on ZK Sync, and it's probably one of the better airdrop targets within the ZK Sync ecosystem. But other than that, I kind of bridge stuff into ZK Sync, do a bunch of transactions, and then bridge out. I don't actually have a huge amount of TVL on this network right now. And I think that the snapshot for ZK Sync, at least for round one of their airdrop, if it hasn't already occurred, it's probably occurring imminently. So I've kind of pivoted my focus a little bit to just maintaining my profile on this network and focusing on other opportunities that I think still have more time to actually rank up and get a larger airdrop. Okay, moving on, we got Zora. So Zora is just for creating NFTs, minting NFTs, but then there's this enjoy meme coin as well. Very similar to the DGen concept on Warpcaster. So I have a chunk of that to potentially farm an enjoy airdrop round two. But other than that, I'm just using Zora to create NFTs and to mint other people's NFTs. And you definitely don't need a huge amount of capital for that. So I just leave you know a reasonable amount in here to keep a minimum balance. And by the way, on pretty much every L2 that I'm farming, I'm trying to leave at bare minimum 0.01 ETH in the wallet at all times because that could be some sort of qualifier or multiplier. So that's why you'll see, especially if you track this public wallet, that pretty much every L2 that has a balance that's non-zero has at least 0.01 ETH in it. Okay, then we got the DGen L3. I made a whole video talking about this, so I'm not gonna get into it right now, but the gas token on this network is that DGen token. You can bridge to and from base with DGen. And then I just have some of this meme coin on this meme L3. This is some pretty DGen stuff here though. Next up, Polygon. I don't really use Polygon for anything other than bridging to other networks or refueling. I have staked a small amount of STG tokens so that I can vote on Stargate DAO proposals. But other than that, I wouldn't say there's much interesting happening with Polygon for me. And then Blast, I have largely faded. I have a small amount of ETH on it and I've interacted with a couple of random dApps on Blast, but I've spoken previously about how I don't like the security situation of this L2. And I just feel like there's other opportunities that I wanna focus my capital and energy on more. Now I'm gonna skip BNB chain and optimism because I don't really use them for anything other than as sort of a bridging destination or source chain. Chroma, I do actually think their airdrop is gonna be happening soon. I believe they said in June. I did all of the quests and basically now I'm just trying to leave a minimum balance on the network and interact with the Chroma L2 occasionally, you know once every couple weeks at least. Then I'm probably gonna skip the rest of these because they're all just for bridging. So I just use all of these different networks here to farm the layer zero airdrop and then airdrops like Jumper and Rango and Dbridge. The one thing that actually stands out is Dimension. So I've spoken about Dimension quite a bit on the channel. I'm staking Dimension. Let's actually open up the governance tab. This is where we can move on from the Ethereum ecosystem, I guess. So if I go to the staking tab here, I'm currently staking 255 Dimension tokens with the Nacion Crypto Validator. I'm also providing liquidity into one of their LP pools, the Diamond STT pool. And when I get some uh, staking rewards for staking, I either delegate them to my stake here or I put them into the LP pools. So I think staking Dimension is going to be a solid play. There hasn't been a ton of action since this token came out, but I think we're getting to the point now where the apps, the roll apps are gonna start deploying on Dimension mainnet. And then we're gonna see a lot more airdrops coming for this. So I got a bunch of Dime tokens in that airdrop. I basically just stake them all across four wallets. So this is one of four wallets that I have where I'm staking a reasonable amount of Dimension tokens in the realm of 150 to 250 per wallet, I would say. Sorry, and then just one more thing about the Ethereum ecosystem before we move on. I also, in addition to you know holding all of these staked assets and restaked assets and bridging, I'm using other DeFi apps like DEXs to swap occasionally and then perp DEXs as well. So sometimes I go and I trade on LogX or IntentX to generate volume for those. All right, so now that I've talked about Ethereum and Dimension, I guess the next logical step is to move to Cosmos. So I have four or five wallets. I'll show you this one right here. Let's open up the Kepler dashboard. So this wallet shows you 
a reasonable cross-section of the type of stuff that I'm doing within different Cosmos ecosystems. A lot of this stuff is just set and forget, stake some tokens, and then hope for some airdrops. So the big one is Celestia. I'm staking Tia in this wallet. I'm also staking a bit of the AXL token from Axelar. I'm holding liquid staked Tia from Stride, and I'm also holding milk Tia but I've deposited that into Demex, so it doesn't actually show in the wallet here. I'm staking a bit of Osmo, but I don't actually expect much to come from that. And I'm also staking some Arch tokens for the Archway drop camp. Again, this one with Nacion Crypto as well. I know these guys, they're great validators, so I like to delegate my tokens to them when I can. Now, a lot of people ask me about injective staking airdrops. Honestly, I don't do much on injective. I use the injective network to farm the hyperlane airdrop because there's a really cheap route to bridge between injective and the injective EVM chain on Ethereum. But other than that, I'm not staking injective and I'm kind of not super bullish on staking the INJ token to get airdrops. So that's kind of an overview of this Cosmos wallet here. Now I have another wallet where I've been staking Atom tokens since like, I forget when, 2019 or 2020. It's kind of my main Cosmos wallet and that's what got me the Tia airdrop as well. And in that wallet, I'm also staking Tia and a bunch of other stuff. All right, let's move now to the Solana ecosystem and keep this train rolling. So this right here is Sonar Watch. It's kind of similar to DBank, but for Solana. So you can track your whole portfolio, not just the stuff in your wallet, but where you've deposited it as well. Now, before I talk about the portfolio, let me actually briefly talk about NFTs. Oh, there's a bunch of spam in here. Um, Two Solana NFTs that I'm currently holding as part of my airdrop portfolio are a homeowners association NFT for parcel. This one has dropped in value by like half since I bought it. So not doing so well on that, but I did get a separate allocation of the parcel token for holding it. And it gives points boost for round two of the airdrop as well. So that's why I have one of these. And then I am also holding a Pykinians NFT. This one is a bit more speculative. It's going to give potentially whitelist to other NFT collections and also maybe a Monad airdrop, but that's quite speculative. Actually, I also have from the Drip platform a bunch of these Pyth NFTs. So I've tried to collect as many of these as I can. I don't know. It's kind of speculative. It's possible that they might have some sort of airdrop relevance moving forward. It's kind of been hinted at, but there hasn't been much movement on it. So these might have been a bit of a waste of money, but I didn't spend that much on these. In terms of my actual strategy moving forward in the wallet, I have a bunch of parcel that I got from round one of the parcel airdrop. Now I'm holding this because I'm kind of bullish on the platform. And also I want to see what they do next because they're supposed to be enabling staking and there's supposed to be benefits for holding the parcel token. Anyways, at this current price, I don't really have an interest in selling it. So that's just sitting there for now until I can find a more productive use for it. If I could deposit it as a single asset deposit into something like Camino or MarginFi, I would park it there for now to just earn some points for it. Anyways, other than that, I have some liquid staked Jupsol, which is the new liquid stake token from Jupiter. And then I have some of the Jube token itself, some Sol just to pay for gas fees and some basically zero balance tokens. If we scroll down here, I am using Camino to LP in Meteora liquidity pools. So this is a two for one airdrop strategy. I could go directly to Meteora, but I like using Camino for it because I earn Camino points. And then also it actually auto rebalances for me. It has sort of a managed strategy approach and I'm providing liquidity on two assets where I actually don't care if I end up fully in one or the other. So the risk of something called impermanent loss doesn't bother me with the assets that I'm LPing. So I have one pool of Soul and the Jube token, and then I have another pool of Wen and the Jube token, and then I also have a pool of Jube and B Soul. So a few different liquidity pools. All of these are through Meteora. Then I've actually taken my W token from the Wormhole airdrop, and I've just parked it in Camino for now. So this is earning me some points for the Camino Finance airdrop. And the reason why I'm holding this is because I'm waiting for W token staking to be enabled. And that has been speculated might lead to Monad airdrops as well. So that's why I'm still holding on to this airdrop here. All right, and I have a balance of the Camino token that is showing up here, but isn't actually 
claimable or live yet. This is just sort of the pre-market trading price. Then on Meteora itself, I'm providing some liquidity for Sol and INF, which is the infinity token from Sanctum. So I like this liquid stake token because it basically is an aggregator of all of the other liquid stake tokens within the Solana ecosystem, kind of like an ETF of liquid stake Sol. And if you LP it on Meteora with Sol, which is a correlated asset, so not too much of a risk there of impermanent loss. I get points for the Meteor airdrop and also potentially will qualify for a Sanctum airdrop, which is the team that runs this INF Infinity token. Then moving down, I'm staking Pi tokens. So I have over 2000 of them staked here. I vote on proposals when they come up and the idea is to potentially get some airdrops for doing this. Maybe again, Monad, that's one of the speculations. And then hopefully some other ones as well, because Pyth is the price oracle that powers a ton of different apps in Solana, DeFi and elsewhere as well. Then scrolling down currently, I don't have tons on parcel. I've kind of rotated some assets around now. So in season two right now, I just have like $136 on parcel right now. I've been kind of focusing more on Sanctum and Meteora recently, although I might get into trading a little bit more on parcel, or if I have a decent chunk of USDC, I might park it on parcel in their liquidity pool because you actually earned a pretty decent yield on that just for sticking it in there. You can earn like six or 7%. So pretty solid way. If you just want to have some stable coins, earning a decent yield and also farming an airdrop as well. Then for Jupiter governance, I'm only staking 113 Jupe tokens. I'm using these to vote on proposals, but since it's actually a linear allocation of all of the benefits from that, this isn't actually yielding too much and I don't expect to get too much out of this. I do have one other Solana wallet where I'm staking Jupe tokens with a more considerable amount. And actually I didn't say this at the beginning, but I have three Solana wallets that I actively use. Well, actually two that are kind of active and one that's kind of like on and off. All right, next up on Zeta Markets, I was trading a bunch on there. I've kind of finished up, wrapped up my trading. Now their Forex points boost is over and I think the token is coming relatively soon. And I'm happy with the level that I got to there in terms of the TVL or the amount that I traded. So I just have a small balance on there. And once in a while I put on a trade now on like max leverage. And then finally on margin five, I have like $50 on deposit. I'm kind of bearish on what margin five has been up to. They've been really dragging their feet. They've had a point system going for feels like literally forever. And one of their co-founders went off the rails on Twitter recently. So the whole situation over there hasn't been ideal and yeah, currently I only have 50 bucks on deposit there. So that is my Solana wallet and Solana airdrop strategy, basically focused recently on Zeta Markets trading, kind of winding that down now, focused on Camino slash Meteora LP, and then also focusing on Sanctum and liquid stake sold tokens. And again, kind of similar to the Ethereum ecosystem, I'm always reassessing new opportunities and the best ways to use my capital to max qualify for yield and airdrops. So if you asked me two months ago, I was pretty heavily focused on leveraging up on Camino itself. But then when we learned it was gonna be a fully linear airdrop, that kind of put a damper on those plans and we pivot to other things. And then recently Sanctum has kind of popped up as one of these new hot airdrop targets. So I have been staking some soul with them and trying to farm that one. So those are the three big ones for me with Ethereum, Cosmos and Solana. I'm also on Aptos though. I have a couple of Aptos wallets. This one right here, just for example, is the one that I use to make my full length tutorial on how to farm the Aptos airdrop. So you can go and watch that if you want actually a detailed breakdown. But basically I've got some staked APT tokens. I've used Aries Market for some DeFi activity, lending and borrowing some stable coins. And I've provided LP on liquid swap for Aptos as well. But I don't have a huge amount of capital on here. Although I would say, I don't even think necessarily you need a huge amount of capital for Aptos. I don't think it's like some of these airdrops where it's gonna be perfectly linear based on just the amount of capital that you have on deposit, but just generating some activity on the Aptos network is solid. Then aside from that, I have some assets on SUI, just a, a little bit of SUI token to pay for gas fees. And I've taken a bunch of USDC and deposited it into the Elixir protocol which also I made a full tutorial about. That's literally all that I've done on Sui. I'm not super into that network. For Starknet, I have for Starknet, I have provided some assets onto Nostra Finance. 
but I actually recently bridged a bunch of it out to find other opportunities because I feel like StarkNet's uh, DeFi summer and their incentives are kind of winding down and the Stark token itself has not been doing very well at all. I'm not actually super bullish on the future of this network. I know some people are, but for me personally, I'm just not super into it. So I don't have a whole lot going on StarkNet anymore. I do have a little bit on Nostra and some LP on Ekubo as well. And for example, if I go to the leaderboard of Nostra Finance, I'm currently ranked 22,700 out of 240,000. But since I've been recently withdrawing some of my assets from this platform, I've been ranking down. And if they don't drop a token relatively soon, I'm just gonna get massively diluted. Other than that, uh, when it comes to the Bitcoin ecosystem, for example, I actually personally do not do much in that. Basically, I have a cold storage Bitcoin wallet where when I buy Bitcoin or I get Bitcoin, I send it to that wallet and I just don't touch it. I'm not active in the runes community, in the inscriptions or ordinals community, and I'm not actively chasing airdrops within the Bitcoin ecosystem. I know a lot of people are and are pretty bullish on it, but for me personally, when it comes to Bitcoin, I've always just preferred to kind of hold it and stash it. And if that means that I'm missing out on some opportunities within that ecosystem, I'm totally fine with that because honestly, you can't have your attention and your capital split into a million different places. Already, even as it is, sometimes I find it hard to keep track of everything because what I've shown you here today are basically my public facing wallets, ones that I use to make tutorials for on this channel, but I'm not actually showing you even the half of it. I have a lot more Ethereum wallets and other wallets as well within these different ecosystems, Cosmos, Solana. So it's a lot to keep track of. And for me personally, adding Bitcoin on top of that has just never been a super high priority. Anyway, so that is my full public airdrop farming portfolio breakdown. I hope that gives you a good idea of my general approach and strategy and where I'm prioritizing assets because often I get questions of, oh, where should I put my money? I can't tell you what to do, but I can show you what I'm doing. So hopefully you found this useful. Thanks so much for watching if you made it this far and have a good day.